Hi everyone, this is Trevor from astrobackyard.com and in this video I'm going to take you through a deep sky image processing tutorial using Adobe Photoshop. Now the data that we'll be using uh, is available in the description below for you to download uh, so you can follow along with me if you want. The images of the Sol Nebula and the total integrated exposure time is 5 hours. So 150 times 2 minute subs at ISO 800 and those were captured using a Canon T3i 600D uh, with a full spectrum mod through uh, a Mead 70mm quadruplet APO telescope. The camera had a Skytech CLS CCD light pollution filter installed because the light pollution is quite heavy in my backyard. I live in a red zone uh, that's classified as Boral 7. So I hope you follow along with me. Um, there's a few additional resources used in Photoshop as well. Gradient Exterminator and the Astronomy Tools Action Set. I'll include links to those in the description below. And uh, with that being said, let's hop into the tutorial. Okay, here we are in Adobe Photoshop. This is my uh, raw, unprocessed, stacked 32-bit TIFF file. Um, Deep Sky Stacker produced. Uh, it looks pretty typical of uh, the stacks I take from the backyard. It has this reddish pinkish tinge to it. The first thing we're going to do is do a slight crop to remove some of the stacking artifacts. Uh, these frames were dithered so they did shift around slightly every two frames and I believe there's um, yeah I can see a thin line here as well so I'm going to crop that out. So the first thing we're going to do is um, take a look at the brightest and darkest points of this image. So uh, we're going to open a threshold adjustment layer. So if you go into layer, new adjustment layer, uh, actually sorry we have to convert this first. We're going to convert this to a 16-bit um, image. Uh, the method here is exposure and gamma. Don't use the default um, local adaptation. So nothing has changed with the image here other than the fact that it is now 16-bit. So we'll go into Layers and Threshold. Here's the window here. Uh, we're going to say OK. And so we're going to slide this slider back and forth to see the brightest and darkest parts of the image. And as you can see, as we get around this spot, um, you can see some of the, the glow down at the bottom left here, the Sol Nebula of course, and then the darkest areas here. So now that we know that, let's just get it kind of in between here. So it looks like that's about 60, 61. Yeah, we'll leave it at 61 now. And we're going to place um, a black sample point on the darkest area using the color sampler tool here. Let's set to a 5x5 five five average. And so we know right here is a dark area of the sky, no stars, no nebulosity. And then we're going to do the same thing with a white, the brightest push, portion of the image. So if we turn this off, we can see some of the brightest stars here. And the cooler, bluer ones are going to be the brightest. So I'm going to choose this one right here. And we'll, we'll just turn this threshold layer off and set our white point indicator right here. And now we're going to um, turn off the threshold layer. We can just delete it. That was just to see the... Uh, confirm the darkest and brightest areas of the image. And so now we're going to control, we're going to adjust the, uh, the background levels. Um, so we've got our point set at 1 here. So there's the data there, RGB, and those are the numbers. And we're going to move these sliders individually to uh, balance the background. So I'm going to bring this into, let's go 
19 across the board. So what we're doing is just setting the black point and um, getting that balanced neutral dark background sky. So as you can see RGB levels are, are 19, 19, 19. So we've set the black point, now we need to set the white point. So that's indicator 2 here and you can see 189, 222, 216. So the same thing in levels but this time we're going to be adjusting the right hand side of the slider and the number we want is 248 there we go now the black and white points have been set in the image uh, it's a good starting point to uh, start doing some stretching. Okay, so we're going to start our curve stretches here. And I just want to make sure the histogram window is open so we can monitor those uh, RGB levels. Uh, I'm going to keep it on colors here. So we're going to start a new adjustment layer. Curves. Do a modest astro stretch. And I'm just going to check my levels. So to do that, you can press Control Alt Shift N plus E to do. It creates a stamp of everything underneath, um, all your layers underneath, and then you have that regular looking histogram. So I'm just going to pull in the uh, the black point slider here, and I can see the red. It's a little overly red right now. So let's just go back to our black point here and check the individual levels. Where's my info palette? There it is. So yeah, we're at 26 red. Let's bring that back down to 20. Okay, we'll do another stretch here. Uh, new adjustment layer. And this one's gonna have more of an S curve to it. So I have two points here. And we're just gently pulling that data forward uh, of the nebula the soul nebula. So when you create these new adjustment layers you can turn them off and on, adjust the opacity and of course go back to where you were before the action took place. So again I'm going to create another stamped layer on top. Check my levels. Just bring those in slightly and I'm going to do another curves adjustment layer here. I'm going to set everything to 33, 33. 33. There we are. So we've stretched the nebulosity, uh, but we've, we've also maintained um, an accurate color balance. Uh, and of course, we can go back and uh, try this again if we're not happy with it. Uh, it's known as a non-destructive workflow. But so far, so good. I'm happy with this right now. Um, it was a pretty modest stretch, but uh, I don't want to introduce too much noise uh, or bloat those stars any more than I have to. So um, not very aggressive. Uh, that being said, I'm going to do one more stretch because I just can't help myself.
closed it. Just an S curve here. And this one, I'll just adjust the opacity layer um, to about 33%. Just a subtle change, a little, little extra glow there. So that's our curve stretching. I'm just going to try one uh, additional color correction uh, trick at this stage by opening a new adjustment layer, curves, this time setting the blending mode to color using the black eyedropper here, choosing a dark area of the sky, so let's set the black point. I like to be a little zoomed out actually for when I when I do click this black point because I you kind of see the image as a whole as opposed to that isolated area. There we go. I like my images a little cooler. And then now I've just clicked the white uh, set white white point eyedropper here. And I'm going to click right into our what I hope is a G2V star like our sun. Let's just take a look at that layer. Yeah, I feel like things got a little too red there. Uh, I'm going to bump this layer down. <laughs> when in doubt whether it helped or not, um, set it to 33% opacity. Subtle difference. Best of both worlds. So that was um, just an additional color balancing trick um, you can try out. So at this stage, we're going to remove the gradients in the image. And um, the fact that there's the glowing portion of the heart nebulae down there uh, makes it um, a little tougher. But it's not to say that it can't be done. So I just hit Control Alt N, Shift Control Alt N plus E to create my uh, top layer here. And this layer is going to be our gradients adjustment layer. So I'm just going to choose the uh, lasso tool with a very high um, feather on there. I've got 55. I don't want to touch this area of the photo. And I'm going to save the heart nebula slightly. And then select the inverse. And this is what I'd like. This is the area I'd like to balance. I'm going to use RC Astro Gradient Exterminator, and this is a plugin um, that I purchased. I think it was about $50, but I use it for every image, so it was well worth it. Um, I've got the detail set to medium and the aggressiveness set to medium and balanced background color checked off. And we'll let Gradient Exterminator do its thing. There you have it. So it did fix a lot of the, um, the gradients we're having the glow at the edges. Um, still going to play with the opacity a little bit. Kept the heart nebula in there. So I think we'll keep that. You can run this several times if you want. Uh, I think I'm going to keep it, but at about 75%. Uh, any tweaking we'll have to do later is fine with me. Create a new layer and just check on our levels again. Always checking the histogram, checking our color balance along the way. So I can see our black point is here 35, 36, 34. I'm just going to balance that out. If anything, I like the blue, the blue channel to be a little bit stronger than, than the rest. There we go. That's a better color balance. I like what I'm seeing at this point. So if we wanted to stay really organized, we could name that layer gradients, and this one color balance. Uh, obviously, if you have more time and you're not shooting a tutorial or YouTube video, you can really take your time, go back, turn these layers off, try something new. Um, but for the purposes of this video, um, I think you get the idea. So let's move forward. So this would be a good 
um, point to save the image as it is, uh, or earlier along the way, you can save before doing each stage, um, just so it's easier to get back to where you were. Um, I'm going to save this. I save my folders by month and date. Today is the 17th. Ignore that file name. Soul um, 2017 11 17. I save this with the layers, of course. It'll be a pretty big file, but it'd be nice to go back here. Okay, now we're going to do uh, a color saturation. Okay, so now we're going to do some uh, color saturation increase increasing um, to the nebula itself, of course. So we'll need to isolate the portions of the image we want to boost in color and um, the ones that we don't. So a great way to do that is with the... Um, so we'll start a new layer here. Um, actually, we'll, we'll wait till we make our selection. So select color range. This is a very po powerful tool for uh, masking stars and uh, the nebula. So we're ha we have it set to sampled colors here. And I'm going to pick the, use the eyedropper and use the pink in the soul nebula here. And then by adjusting this fuzziness slider, you can isolate uh, pretty well just the, the nebula here. And so now that it's created that selection, we can do a, a new adjustment layer here, hue saturation, and lo and behold, it's created a mask from that selection uh, for us to adjust the saturation independently from everything else. Uh, so pretty cool. Uh, this is really where your personal tastes come into play. Um, I, I think I'm somewhere in the middle. I don't like the super vibrant, uh, really rich color images but I don't like the dull ones either. Um, I am going to go saturation boost of about nine. And let's turn that off and on. So here's before and after. So pretty subtle, pretty subtle change there. You can do the same thing with the, uh, I like to do the vibrance control. So we're going to do select color range again. Sampled colors. I'm on my adjustment layer by accident. Colors. Right. I just want to make sure I'm on that pink. Okay. Selection is made. Layer. Vibrance this time. Boost the saturation a little bit and the vibrance a little bit. Okay, the before and after. We've boosted the color. Next, we'll move on to noise reduction. 
Okay, so to speed things up, and since I won't be going back uh, in this tutorial anyway to any of the previous stages, I'm just going to merge these layers just to speed up my machine. Everything actually underneath our latest changes, I'm just going to merge. Okay, so I've got um, another layer on top here that we're going to do our noise reduction on. So this is the first time we're going to be using the Astronomy Tools Action Set. Um, if you can see the folder here, Astronomy Tools. Um, and the one we're going to use is Space Noise Reduction. So I'm going to run that. a few seconds and then once that's done we'll look at the before and after to see what that's in fact done and as you can see it does a great job so let's look at this area here zoomed in um, that color noise that you can see uh, has been been fixed uh, dramatically you do lose a little bit of detail though um, but when that detail uh, includes a lot of noise uh, it's a fair trade. That being said, I think I'm going to use this at about 66% to try and get the best of both worlds here. Sorry about that noise. Okay, so and now I'm going to do um, another level of another iteration of noise reduction. So we'll call this noise reduction 1. And I'm going to create my new layer on top. And this time we're going to do deep space noise reduction. Now the, the deep space noise reduction uh, calms the darkest areas of the image. So it should make a difference to our, uh, our background sky. Another one you can use here is the blotch reduction action. Um, that one does a great job as well if you happen to have some blotchy areas in your image. So let's take a look at what's been done here. So as you can see it kind of softens everything up but also gets rid of a lot of noise. And uh, that's a good trade-off if you really just despise seeing noise. And I feel like I have a higher tolerance than some but um, for this one why don't we just smooth everything right out. We lost a little bit of detail but we can sharpen that up later. So why don't we put this at about 66% just to make myself feel a little better. And noise reduction two. And we can save our image as phase two if you want, whatever you want to call it. Um, but it is nice to go back and especially if you want to reprocess things, uh, but you're happy with your, you know, your first few steps. So that's noise reduction. At this stage, uh, I'm going to look at the color balance a little bit. Um, it's looking a little off in my eyes. So we'll set our color sampler in a smooth area of sky here. And yeah, it looks like the blue is a little high, which is surprising. Why don't we just use our tried and true? Actually, this looks like a good spot. Yeah, again, the blue's a little high. Let's just pull everything in. So we're sitting at 24, 25, 28. I'm gonna pull the green in. Like I said, a small change can make a big difference. And the blue to 24. Okay. Here we are. I'm, I'm quite happy with this. This is a color balance. And now we can work on sharpening. One of my favorite steps. So we'll start a new layer. And we're 
we're going to use the unsharp mask. So under filter, sharpen, unsharp mask. Now the settings I'm going to use here, the amount is going to be at 100%, the radius at 2, and the threshold at 6. You can press this uh, preview toggle here. And I've run that. So this is our sharpen layer. As you can see, it has sharpened the details slightly, but it's also created the um, halos around the stars. So there is an action that helps with that in the Astronomy Tools action set, and it's called Fade Sharpen to Mostly Lighten. Let's have a go at that. If I could find it, there she is. I believe it did help. I believe it did help. So I'll have to go back to our history here because I didn't make uh, a new layer. So unsharp mask, fade, to, wow, it really helps. Fade sharpen to mostly lighten. Holy smokes. That helped really well. So let's look at our, our sharpen layer here. The before and after. So this is kind of a good area to look at. It sharpens the details, but it sharpens the stars as well. And that's not necessarily a good thing. I like the, the stars to have kind of a soft edge. So again, when in doubt, um, do it in thirds. So I've got 66% uh, sharpen. All right, now we are uh, getting closer to finalizing our image here. Um, and we're gonna minimize the stars. This makes a big difference uh, in the image. So let's create our new layer here. Again, that's Shift, Control, and Alt, N plus E. Select color range, and this time I'm gonna do highlights. So you can adjust this fuzziness slider. I've got the range here at 190. Um, the other way you can do it is to use sampled colors on the eyedropper on a star, of course, rather than highlights. Um, let's see if that's any more accurate. So I've got the biggest and brightest stars here selected. And as you can see, it's only got kind of the inside of the star without the outer halo. So we're gonna go to select, modify, expand. Let's see about three pixels. You just wanna get the entire halo of the star as well. Expand by one. Here we go. Uh, this layer, we're gonna before we forget, forget we're gonna name it star minimize, and we're gonna use filter other minimum, and we've got a radius of one. It's giving us a little preview of what it does to the stars there. Very powerful technique. What a difference, right? And when you reduce the stars like that, the object shows up that much more. It kind of pops from, uh, it's not hidden behind uh, all those bright stars. And of course, that's a little drastic for me. I'm gonna set the opacity to 66%. It's done a great job at making those stars smaller but it's left it still a little bit more natural than if we left it at a full 100%. So that's making the star smaller uh, phase one. Um, another way I like to do it is using the Astronomy Tools action set. It's one of the actions I use in every single one of my photos. 
very powerful. I'm going to create a new layer on top. This time we're going to go into the actions and go to use the make stars smaller action. This can be run several times, uh, but it's easy to get carried away um, and not realize what it's actually doing to your stars. They can st start to kind of morph into each other and, and kind of show up as uh, diamond shapes. Uh, you don't want that. So pay attention to the quality of your stars while you're, um, and don't get too carried away with, with just the contrast of your nebula. Pay attention to those stars. That's uh, the progress bars on the other, my other monitor here running. Still going. You think this is long, wait till you see the, uh, how long it takes for the next action. The make stars smaller action has finished. That took a while. Uh, so let's turn it off and on as always to see the difference. So that's without it and that's with it. Subtle, but uh, just does a beautiful job. If you can see, this is this is starting to look very nice. Um, just to save my uh, computer, I'm going to merge these layers all together. If you don't mind a huge file size and you want to uh, go back and make changes, you'll want to keep those layers in there. So we'll call this layer star minimize two. And I'm really loving the way this is looking right now. So the next action, I'm almost scared to run it. It's going to take a long time. Uh, this image is, uh, we haven't scaled it down at all. So, I mean, it's 5,076 pixels wide. It's a nice large image, which is great um, that it's looking this good at this size. Uh, we could print it out poster size. It would look great. Um, or just a high resolution photo on, online. I mean, at 100%, it's, you can, you know, Kind of look around and enjoy the, the scenery. I love it. So the next action, uh, and I'm literally going to merge everything together for the purposes of this tutorial. This is a uh, this is uh, throwing my non-destructive workflow uh, out the window. Um, so the action I want to run here is called enhance DSO and reduce stars. Again, this is one that I use in every single astrophoto and it basically works like magic so it's going to pull forward some of the dim details of the nebula and reduce that star size even further so i'm going to run this now and then i'm going to go uh, refill my coffee and this might take up to five minutes on this image see you in a minute or two so the action has completed the enhanced DSO and reduced stars uh, in the astronomy tools action set. It's an extremely powerful action. I love what it does to uh, my astrophotography images. Um, it's one of the reasons I love this action set so much. Um, because I flattened everything to speed things up, um, we have to go back in the history to see it before and after. So this is, this is before the action was run, and this is after. Uh, so very powerful. I just love what uh, I love what it does to the image. So we're going to move on from here. I've created um, a new layer on top. I've stamped visible, and now we're just going to run a quick action called less crunchy, more fuzzy. And now that's going to soften up the stars. Uh, a little bit further, it's going to sharpen our details as well. Uh, but there's some things we can do about that afterwards. And of course, we can adjust the opacity of this, this layer. So the before and after, look at some of these smaller stars here. Um, let's turn this up to 100%. So that's this is before the less crunchy, more fuzzy. And this is after. So, you know, it, it makes them look like glowing orbs as they are as opposed to, uh, you know, crunchy, crunchy dots. So I like that one. I'm going to leave it at 66%. Less crunchy. And again, you would have all your original layers um, in, in the layers palette here. Your file size would be huge, but at least you could go back. 
All right, sir. So the next step would be, would be to do some selective sharpening. And I'm going to be uh, doing that kind of um, an unorthodox way that I like to do it. But who knows, maybe you'll like doing it this way too. So with our layer on top here, I am going to go into the filter, sharpen, smart sharpen. And in the preview window, I'm going to go into some of the details of the nebula here. And let's just see what we're going to do here. So you can, of course, play with these. I'm going to keep the noise reduction uh, rather low. And we're the thing we're looking out for here is not to create too many of these. Um, you can see these bright red hot pixels. And we're actually just sharpening um, small stars and actually some noise in there. So you want to be careful with this. But uh, bear with me here. So we'll run this sharpen on this entire layer here. And it's going to crunch up all our stars and everything we've uh, worked so hard to get to. But the key is... So I'm creating this layer of before we did that. And I'm going to put it on top of the sharpen layer. So when we when we turn the, the regular soft layer off, underneath it is the sharp layer. So with the soft layer selected, we can go in with the eraser brush on um, pick a good size uh, the hardness all the way down so it's nice and soft and then selectively where we've got the opacity here we'll turn that right up to about 80 percent selectively um, erase this top soft layer and reveal the sharpness underneath it's basically a mask um, I prefer to do it this way with the layers and actual um, not using working from that mask layer but actually just revealing the the image underneath so let's kind of get a bird's eye view here there aren't too many areas that I want to selectively sharpen like that this would be one so we get those those hard edges of the dark dust there Subtle difference, but um, in the end, it will make it'll be a noticeable difference. Again, here, being careful not to you know crunch up any of the stars. But this is something I do in a lot of my images, and it really makes them pop. So if you see those sharp areas, chances are I've done some selective sharpening like this. Very subtle in this one, um, but I just thought I would show you that. So that's just some uh, additional selective sharpening we've done. So the same way we've done that selective sharpening, we can do selective smoothing. I'm going to merge everything for the purposes of this tutorial. So we're going to go into, at least create one new layer. We're going to go into noise reduction, uh, reduce noise. This is just a, a, a standard uh, filter from Photoshop and the settings I've got here strength of 10 this is going to be pretty aggressive preserve details of 90 reduce color noise I'm going to leave that at 25 and sharpen none so this is going to soften everything up but of course we don't want to we're going to have to remove the areas that we want to keep sharp So if you can see the before and after, it cleans up a lot of this color noise here, but then it softens all our details there. So the same thing like before, I'm copying my, um, my background layer. I can put it on top of our new soft layer. When I take it away, it's there. So any selective areas that I want to smooth out, I would simply use the eraser brush. And remove this top sharp layer 
and I mean this can get really time consuming um, but if you really want that beautiful image you'll go through it the whole thing and soften up and smoothen those areas so that's selective smoothing and again there's you know it would be wise to do that here in the background sky um, you would pretty much want to take away you could you could uh, smoothen most of the of the surrounding sky the only areas you want to keep sharp are the, uh, the nebulosity so the final step of our um, image processing here is we'll be adding a luminance layer very powerful technique I'm going to flatten everything, um, place my new layer on top, and on this layer we're going to go to Mode, Lab Color, don't flatten, and then when we look at our channels here, we want the Lightness layer. So on this Lightness layer, I'm going to Control A, cop, um, select all, Control C, copy, just to be safe, create a new document, paste, copy it again. Sorry, my coffee maker is done. Um, go back to our original image here. We can convert back the mode to RGB. We can flatten for, for, these, for this uh, tutorial. And then I'm going to paste this lightness layer on top. And what we're going to do is change the blending mode to luminosity. So this is just brightening up the brightest areas of the image, uh, which can be helpful for boosting contrast of your, your DSO. Uh, you won't want to use this at full opacity, uh, anywhere from you know 50 to 75%. Uh, and then when you've got it on there, you can make some curves adjustments. I recommend pulling the curve downwards uh, so it's not so drastic, but you still get some of the, uh, the extra boost you're looking for. Here's the difference. You can see um, the, the difference in contrast that made. Why don't we leave that at about 66%. I'm rushing this stage. You could really um, spend a long time really mastering this. Uh, but we've darkened the sky, uh, we've boosted the contrast. Um, so that's our luminance layer on top. We call that loom for luminance. And then at this point, it would just be a matter of uh, tweaking the image, uh, finishing up just the way you like it. So we can take finally take these these points off here. And for me, I'd probably end up cropping this. Uh, say goodbye to that area of the heart nebula there uh, but I, I want to keep this wide field of view uh, and for this object my final image I've rotated it as well kind of like the orientation here uh, so I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and you've walked along with me of course with uh, deep sky astrophotography uh, image processing, there are so many ways to go about it, and a lot of it has to do with your personal tastes. Um, but at least following the steps that I've shown you here, I think it's a good starting point um, for you to have some fun with um, not only this image, um, but your own. So uh, I really appreciate you sticking around for the whole tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I didn't drive you too crazy with uh, some of my steps if you disagreed with the, the direction I was taking, but that's half the fun. Um, so I'm going to finish up this image. I'll share my final result at the end. And uh, yeah, like I said, um, just have fun with it and, and continue with this amazing hobby. And I hope this was useful to you. Clear skies. Thanks, everybody.